Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootlicker shills, Dutch lay serfs, peasants, vassals, minions, meat sacks. Yes, it is I, a useful idiot. I have returned after an eight year absence. And it seems appropriate that I should return at this uh, auspicious moment, this historical event, the conviction of Donald Trump, our former president, of 34 felony counts. And uh, we are crossing a Rubicon and all bets are off. We are now entering unknown territory. But uh, I want to remark that uh, we have two historical events this week, both the conviction on felony charges of a former U.S. president and the return of a useful idiot. And uh, like MacArthur, I have returned. And uh, I, I share something with, with Donald Trump now because I'm older and meaner than ever. So uh, buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. And uh, I'm going to have to spend a lot of time as I do new videos, uh, once again explaining that uh, I have no love for party line drones. I have no uh, uh, love for either the Democrats or the Republicans. I have no skin in this game. I do not support uh, Donald Trump. I do not support um, President Biden. And uh, I will go into that more in uh, future videos. So uh, anyway, let's get to it. Uh, this is a dangerous precedent. And I find it interesting, too, because it follows a pattern where um, each administration uh, gathers new powers. And they seem to be very short-sighted because they, for example, they hand a bunch of powers to Barack Obama, a bunch of new uh, 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 presidential powers, and then seemed uh, a little short-sighted because then the next president, someone like Donald Trump, or now uh, Joe Biden, uh, inherits, these, inherits these same powers and uh, tends to abuse them. So uh, we see a continuation of that pattern. And uh, as far as the case, um, there really shouldn't be a case. Uh, the entire case should have been derailed by the fact that Cohen is a proven pathological liar and now an admitted embezzler and is not reliable. And then also the tape that uh, surfaced on the Bill Maher show uh, showing that Stormy Daniels was completely complicit in the event and there was no um, um, rape or, or forced uh, interaction whatsoever. So those two facts alone should have uh, derailed the case. But then we also get into the legalities involved. Um, first of all, the idea of paying hush money in itself is not illegal. Uh, they're tying the case of hush money uh, and trying to connect it with election interference, with that, which then, of course, makes it a felony. Other than that, it would be a misdemeanor. But they up the game and categorize it as a felony because it's supposedly some kind of election interference uh, to pay hush money. Uh, during the election cycle, and uh, so the, the the whole way this was constructed was pretty fishy right from the beginning, and, uh, and it's not lost on me either the, the irony that uh, the liberal base holds up Bill Clinton as some kind of uh, icon for the party, and yet he is also a known uh, sexual predator and uh, spent time paying out lots of hush money, but I guess since it wasn't during the election cycle, then it's okay. And so as we move forward, um, what we can take away from this case is that uh, it's an obvious case of judicial corruption. And I know the liberal media and the politicians are all trying to categorize it as justicism has been served and that the system is working. But, and, and they're also outraged that Trump would, would challenge uh, challenge that categor categorization and call it a witch hunt and uh, rigged in a corrupt trial, which it, it very much was. And I, I have to remind you that I have no skin in the game. I'm not here to defend Trump. I'm just here to look at the facts and uh, state what I see. And so we see a, uh, uh, a hand-picked jury out of a known uh, stronghold for liberal voters in New York and then uh, we also have the rules change by which they didn't have to unanimous, unanimously decide that he was guilty 
um, count by count, they were given the opportunity to just decide overall that he was guilty and therefore uh, not separate out the charges because it only would have taken one juror to disagree and it would have been a hung jury and the case would be in a whole different place than what it is now. And so moving forward, um, because it's at the city level now, um, there, there'll be endless appeals that will move from the city level to the state level. It doesn't really qualify for the federal courts at this point, but at some point it will be pushed into the federal courts and uh, most likely it, it will end up in the Supreme Court at some point. And of course, if the Supreme Court uh, strikes this case down, there will be a continued uh, liberal outrage about the, the nature of the present uh, Supreme Court. And um, that's, that's also an interesting point because, you know, as long as the Supreme Court goes along with the liberal agenda, then they are held in the utmost esteem. But once they start making uh, decisions that go to the so-called other side, then all of a sudden they're illegitimate. And um, there's been a lot of outrageous language and rhetoric directed at the Supreme Court because of this. And uh, I, I find it interesting, too, that along the way that we see um, Supreme Court justices uh, labeled as activist judges. And the, the, that goes along with what I just said. Um, you know, as long as they go along with the, your particular agenda, then they're just normal justices. But once you disagree with their decisions, they become activist judges. So that's, that's just a na the nature of the beast. So um, and another theme that we see go, uh, rippling through this whole process, too, is this whole idea that no one is above the law. And so they keep uh, spouting that ma mantra, mantra about no one is above the law, and Biden is out there touting that, and all the, the uh, uh, liberal politicians are all talking about uh, no one is above the law. Ironically, of course, Hillary Clinton is amongst them um, touting the idea that nobody is above the law. Well, as we've seen, Hillary Clinton is above the law, and as we've also seen, Hunter Biden is above the law, and Joe Biden is above the law, and uh, the list goes on of people who are above the law. And uh, I also uh, chafe at a lot of uh, YouTube pundits out there that are talking about, well, this is evidence that the system works. And uh, no, this is evidence that the system works the way they want it to when it's manipulated for a political agenda. The fact that a sitting president can use our judicial system and all the agencies of the federal government, including the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the CIA, to uh, persecute uh, his political opponent um, is very dangerous ground, and uh, as described by a lot of people observing this, that we're moving into um, uh, banana republic territory, and I, I would agree with that assessment. So uh, uh, some of the other points that are interesting about this, of course, is that it's not going to affect the Trump machine at all. I hate to disappoint uh, the liberal base, but uh, he, won't, he won't be going to jail, and the appeals system... Uh, will we'll go on uh, for quite some time, probably uh, many months. I doubt it will go into years. And uh, Trump also uh, did some record-breaking uh, uh, funds raising uh, the very day after the verdict, $300,000 in one day. And so uh, his uh, uh, campaign funding is uh, breaking all kinds of records, and he's far ahead of, of uh, President Biden. And I, I also have to laugh at uh, a lot of the stories that appeared over the last several weeks and months about how all of this, uh, um, all these troubles that uh, Trump has faced and, and all the fines and everything else are, are, you know, at some point some of these media uh, idiots have even talked about the fact that he's broke now and he can't afford this stuff. But of course, uh, he, his net worth is $7.7 .7 billion. So he's, he's well ahead of the game and, and none of this is going to hurt him. And, and in fact, just like all the other attempts um, by the liberals to uh, take Trump out of the election process, uh, this one will also backfire, and it's going to backfire in a grand style, and we're, we're seeing the evidence of that already. And uh, one of the other things that's very disturbing to see 
uh, is the mass psychosis of the liberal base. And once again, I, I don't have any skin in the game. I'll, I'll go after Republicans and Democrats. But what I'm seeing now, this collective orgasm by the liberal base thinking thinking that something big has happened, that, that, and that Trump is not going to be in the race anymore, and that he might actually be in jail, um, is really, really disturbing. And uh, I, I can only call it mass psychosis, and we've seen this mass psychosis uh, for the last eight years, um, a, a aptly described as Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, they lost all perspective on, on reality and uh, cling, to the, cling to this hope that uh, somehow Biden is this uh, paragon of saving democracy and somehow uh, Trump is a uh, existential threat to democracy, which of course is ridiculous. First of all, we had Trump as president for four years and, and none of the things that they uh, claim to fear are gonna happen next, uh, happen during that presidency. And also, uh, it's also uh, extremely disingenuous because we see the Biden administration actually being a threat to democracy and displaying uh, friendly fascism and authoritarian elements. Well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we have the harnessing of, of all the corporations. Uh, social media has been hustled into this. And we have the appropriation of intelligence agencies, the FBI, the CIA, Department of Justice, all on board uh, persecuting Trump. And uh, I, I have to say again, you know, I'd be, I'd be pretty excited. I'd be pretty excited if they actually really had something on Trump and any of these charges are, are legitimate. And uh, when I see an instance of, instance of that, I will report it. But uh, this is uh, exactly what Trump and uh, his supporters and conservative media have described as a witch hunt, and it's a, it's a witch hunt. And it's not necessarily to truly damage Trump. Um, the purpose of it all, of course, is to remove him as an element in the upcoming election. So we even have Biden making a statement of that just because Trump didn't like the outcome, uh, didn't like the verdict, is why he's challenging it, which is so simplistic and uh, moronic. Uh, to suggest that, uh, just like Trump had issues with the election legitimately, and I know a lot of people call that election denying, but uh, he legitimately had questions, and he also has legitimate questions about the uh, veracity of the legal process that he's just gone through. So uh, uh, the worst part of this, as always, is the media shit show, and uh, it's just remarkable, and, and, and once again, I'll, I will be doing a video on the, the entire idea of, of the media and what a shit show and how they are in actuality one of the most dangerous elements in the country right, right now, if not the globe. And, uh, but uh, I, I don't want to get into that right now. But I will say that uh, some of the results we're going to see immediately uh, going forward right now is that uh, we see the donor class the elites uh, quietly moving to the Trump camp because they see the writing on the wall. And uh, they, they also understand, uh, because uh, so many of them are lawyers, um, that this ultimately will, will not really affect anything um, other than uh, being a distraction and a speed bump. And uh, we will also see, uh, you know, continue circling the wagons by the liberal media uh, an astonishing level of delusion and denial and uh, altered reality and revisionism. So, uh, but that's what we expect from the media. And, and like I said, I will get into that more in the future. And then uh, another interesting development too is we're, we're actually seeing a lot of neocons, uh, uh, neoconservatives and members of the Republican Party who have been critical of Trump, but they are questioning um, the legitimacy of this legal uh, proceeding, and justifiably so. And we also see some uh, liberal commentators also uh, seeing what's ha actually happening. And, uh, and then uh, another element of that, too, is that we have a lot of legal experts that have come out and discussed uh, the minutia of this legal process and questioned a lot of it. And in, in no uncertain terms, I've seen a few 
uh, uh, lawyers on some programs that still seem to be in denial and are deluded and seem to have a very primitive analysis of the legalities of this case. But that's to be expected. You're going to have lawyers who actually understand the law uh, and are not prone to partisanship. And then we have lower grade lawyers who uh, really don't have a clue and are reacting mostly emotional and based based on their own political agenda. So uh, so there we have it. We've we've crossed the Rubicon. This is truly a, a historic event. It sets some very dangerous precedents, and uh, it, it's going to be very uncomfortable and probably pretty horrifying moving forward. Um, one thing I can say for sure is that uh, barring any uh, big surprises or something unexpected, including very extreme possibilities, Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States. And I, I, I it's not exactly like I hate to say it. It's just an inevitability. Um, everything that we see, all the numbers, um, everything we see, uh, the fact that uh, even those in denial that are in delusional have to admit that Biden is a, a catastrophic failure and he displays it every day. But once again, uh, I will be doing a full video on Joe Biden and I will explain all that in more detail. So uh, lastly, I would just like to say that uh, one result of this, particularly moving forward as there's more drama, is that as the election cycle gets closer and closer, uh, I pretty much expect there to be a lot of civil unrest and this will be a summer of uh, great unrest. There's going to be a lot of violence. Uh, I think the liberal base is really going to get pretty riled up as things proceed and the inevitability of Trump becoming president um, becomes more and more apparent. And uh, when he actually does get elected, um, I, I can't even find the words to explain what's going to happen next. So. Here it comes. The fire has been lit. Everybody should prepare themselves. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.